And a very good evening to everybody. Thank you for joining us. This is Saturday, the 3rd of October. Coming up for 6 p.m., this is Christopher Dagen coming to you in our in-concert session on Saturday evening. Saturday evening is our in-concert program. And tonight is a very special evening. We are inviting you to join us. We'll be starting our program, our concert proper, at 6 p.m. in just under 10 minutes. And it's a beautiful evening of mist and rain. It is cold, cold, cold. I'm sure you're all snuggled up at home, hopefully by the fire or by a heater, wherever you are. And um, we invite you to grab yourself something to refresh yourself, to keep yourself beveraged for the next while from 6 p.m. Because this evening we have another in-concert session, a beautiful program of music. But this evening we have something extraordinarily special. Because, as I was saying the other day, um, we are, I think, on live stream number 54. 54 hours of live streaming. And thank you for your patience. Thank you for sticking with us and for sticking with me because you have had 54 hours of me nonstop for the past six months. And tonight we have something special because we have a guest artist. This evening I'm enjoyed by, enjoyed by the amazing um, KZN based and from KZN, I was always proud to say that to say he's South African, but also from this part <laughs> of the world, Aristide Duplessis, who's going to be joining me here on the cello. And um, Aristide, how are you doing? I'm well, thanks, Chris. And how Good. are you? No, I'm fantastic. So lovely to have you here. Aristide and I have got a really beautiful program of music. We're playing some of the most celebrated, famous, most gorgeous, gorgeous music that is going to keep you very warmed, warm your heart. The cello is an incredible instrument. And as you're here in the hands of Aristide, who is an absolute master soloist, concert soloist, he has been recognized as South Africa's premier cellist. Oof, okay, and well. yeah, no, it wasn't writing. <laughs> it wasn't writing. It was put in writing, in writing after a concert with the orchestra in Johannesburg, the newspaper critic who has um, Never had very nice things to say about me, to be honest. <laughs> it's called Aristide said, is this South Africa's preeminent, is that the right word, preeminent chess? That is the word he used. Yes. yes. And I think he's right because you are here. Aristide is simply incredible. Aristide is from Durban originally. He studied in Cape Town at the University of College, like many of us, University College of Music, like many of us have, and then also spent some time uh, and on an Oppenheimer the Scholarship, Oppenheimers, yeah. yes. Oppenheimer, thank goodness, for the Oppenheimers. Yes, yes. Absolutely, where would we be without them supporting music for so many years? And, yeah. And he went to study in Switzerland, in Zurich, and you were there for how long? I was, well, nearly three years, three basically. Years. Fantastic, yes. yeah. And you studied with? Uh, I studied with the um, principal cellist of the Tornhalle Orchestra, who's just left the orchestra, actually, to be a full-time professor, Thomas Grossenbacher. Um, he was for many years the assistant of David Geringas, who's one of the most prominent cello teachers in Europe, sort of in the 70s, 80s and 90s. Mm -hmm. And so it was a very strong sort of combination of the German school and a bit of the Russian school and basically his own thing. But we had to, it was one hell of a lot of work, but yeah. I, I'm still learning today from it. <laughs> That's a real teacher. He plants <laughs> something team. in your brain and yeah. no, off you go. It's, a, it's an yeah. incredible. And it's amazing. I also had the great opportunity of studying overseas. And it's such an incredible experience to, to be in a different environment and to really see the incredible workings of the European music in industry, the number of musicians and the, the standard, uh, the absolute focus and complete, complete dedication that the teachers mm -hmm. and the students have. It's a very inspiring experience that one, I'm sure, has enriched us both greatly. Yeah, yes, yes. Absolutely. Uh, and you're now part of the KwaZulu-Natal Philharmonic Orchestra. You're co-principal cellist. Yes, uh, when I returned in um, 2015, there was a job opening. Okay. I was very fortunate there was a job opening right after my studies. That's good timing. Yeah, good and timing. then I was very fortunate, you know, at the end of it I was thinking, okay, it's all nice. I've been studying and doing all these things and being a little high flyer, but, <laughs> you know, where's the job now? Yeah. And it's, oh, it's difficult. It's very difficult, especially, I think, in South Africa, if you don't have a job, because you have to build up your own teaching, your own concerts, your own... You know, but orchestra musicians in a certain sense are lucky that we can 
play have a basis, for a living in yeah, Vita Have a basis to work from. Yes. And so at, as the co-principal, co you sit next to your principal cellist, who is also one of your teachers and a very good friend of mine as well, and also someone who's known to many of uh, my audiences, Boris Kerimov. Yes. He's Use your, your pal at, at, at the desk, you sit next to him every day. <laughs> yes. What's, uh, what is it like working with your, your previous teacher like that? It's quite interesting because I studied with Boris for my last two years of high school and it was a wonderful time. He sort of woke me up in many ways, you know, he sort of, you know, the first thing he said to me after a couple of lessons um, after getting to know my playing and so on, he said, "I think you, you know, I think you love your cello so much that you don't want to harm it <laughs> when you play." And so Boris okay. was really inspirational and really bringing everything out of me musically, really pushing my limits, stretching me, yes, and yeah. and we focused so much on music and the, not even phrasing or basic things like that, but the mood, the character, mm. realization mm. of the the mm. atmosphere, mm. and. Along with that, my technique just improved so mm. much because I, was, I had to be mm. flexible to mm. do these things. Sure. So it was a wonderful awakening. Yeah. And then I was basically, I went and studied for ooh, seven years, I suppose. Um, and coming back to Boris was very interesting. Um, <laughs> you know, many teachers, many people say this, you know, you can't remember things that your teacher taught you, but Many of the things you say when you're teaching, then you all mm. of a sudden remember, okay, they're from your teacher. Yeah, so yeah. They're sort of ingrained it, it, into me. Sure. I remember the, seeing this clip, Leonard Bernstein talks about this. He says there's this American expression, that'll learn you. That'll learn you. That'll yeah, learn yeah. you. And it's a good, it's a true, I was mm -hmm. actually teaching this morning on a masterclass and you often find yourself when you're teaching and you're looking at someone else's playing and you're trying to get to the the kind of kernel of what you're trying to say, you actually hear yourself talking back because yeah. you learn so much about, you know, about trying to analyze things and how things no, really work and how they yeah. can work or how they don't work sometimes. Mm -hmm. That's always the frustrating thing when things don't work and you don't know how to fix it. And, um, you know, there's a cellist who was in Durban for many years. She's in Cape Town now, Sarah Akers. Did you ever meet Sarah, Sarah Akers? Akers? You know Sarah. Sarah's yeah, watching these programs. Oh, well, great. Hi, Big Hi, shout Sarah. out to Sarah. <laughs> Sarah, well, when I was a first year student, I think, in Durban, and then I knew Sarah when I was in Cape Town, we spent a lot of time together. Oh, she had wonderful. a flat just down the road from yeah, me yeah. and we used to play there. We played with her. Sarah at Lucia, do you remember Lucia? Lucia, uh, yes, 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 yes. Well, yeah, we had, what I wanted to say about Sarah is that, you know, I wanted to get pupils as soon as I went to UCT to get, you know, my own income and while I was a student and we just got talking about teaching and, you know, I was always, I've always been interested in schooling and pedagogy, how to do things and all of that and she said to me, you know, I was this young little whippersnapper, but she said to me, you know, you'll start teaching, but you know, in 10 years, so basically after teaching for 10 years, you write off the first 10 years and the rest, you know, then you sort of start knowing yeah. what's going on yeah. from there. And I sure. never really believed it, but actually, now I really, it really is, do. It is. It's, yeah, no, it's true. It's true. No, I hear you. Every, student, um, every student is different. That's yeah, the approach no, you have exactly. to have. Yeah. Yeah. No, I hear And I think that's, I mean, the, 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 weird, you know, the weird thing, interesting. I actually don't teach, as you know, at all. So mm. it's quite strange. And it's interesting you say that because I know exactly what you mean. Because when I'm teaching, like on a master class position, I'm just there for a short while, for 30, 40 minutes, and then I'm gone. And it's that actual commitment of working with a student over a long term that I think mm. I'm so scared of and I'm so terrified of because I don't really know what I'm doing and this is something that I hear a lot about and I'm quite um, not passionate about it but I feel quite strongly about it I think that's what the thing is is that there's so many situations where people are teachers and they actually don't really know how to teach very well mm -hmm. I find in music that uh, it's a very difficult thing. You know, you really have to study teaching to be a, a good oh, teacher. Yeah. It doesn't yes, just happen. Yes. Just because you can play an instrument doesn't mean that you can get well, someone else it's, to it's, do it. It's, it's, it's educating. It's about it's being educating. an educator. You have to really know. Imparting that. knowledge. This is how you do this. This is how you do that. That's, mm. you know, training. But educating but, is teaching somebody how to develop ideas exactly. from what you've shown them. And so you're dealing, when you're dealing with young musicians, you're dealing with very fragile, often not fragile, but very vo volatile, not volatile, but pliable people. You know, when you're dealing with the youth, always, it's a very pliable place to be. Yes, and but it's their a curiosity great responsibility. is amazing. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's what's terrifying. Oh, it's gone six o'clock. 
we need to play some music. So okay. it's gone six. Welcome everybody. This is Piano Hour with myself, Christopher Diagon, on the 3rd of October and with Aristide Duplessis, who's joining us this evening. And we're going to have a magnificent program of cello and piano music. And we are going to start off with um, one of the, well, in fact, probably the most well-known celebrated cello melody ever written, The Swan from the Carnival of the Animals by Camille Saint-Saëns. It's a beautiful piece of music. It I is. mean, no, no matter how many times you've played it, it is magical. Yes. Well, I mean, there are several times when I was younger where it wasn't so beautiful when I played <laughs> it. But, you know, a lot of us sort of gravitate to, let's say some people like to say more serious composers than Saint-Saëns, but yeah. this is actually, no, Boris once said to me, yes, you know, people think Saint-Saëns is a lot of fun and games, and it's kind of like a Mozart mm -hmm. and the Romantic mm -hmm. era, but the Swan is such a, yeah. such a masterpiece, no, actually, I find a real masterpiece. Yeah, absolutely, and I, I find so much of Saint-Saëns' music, the clarinet sonata, the trios, they have incredible weight, incredible passion. Mm -hmm. Some, I think sometimes more than actually many other composers. <laughs> The interesting thing that I've, the interesting story I find about this, the Saint-Saëns composed this Carnival of the Animals. It's a very well known uh, selection of music, but it's written for such an unusual combination in its original sense. It's often played with orchestra, but it was actually played originally for string quartet, so just for four musicians, not a full string section, two pianos, one double bass, a xylophone and glockenspiel, one, cl one clarinet and one flute, which is a rather unusual group of people. I mean, two pianos and a string quartet. That's a rather odd. And the reason that this actually happened was that Saint-Saëns wrote this as a private entertainment for his friends. They decided, let's get together and have some fun. And these were the instruments that the group of friends involved were actually playing. So that's why it's a rather unusual connection of just one clarinet and a xylophone. And then he gave each of these people a solo item to show off their skill and show off the instrument. And he wrote this incredible music for the swan, for the cello solo, the elephant for the double bass, <laughs> and the flute gets the birds, and the xylophone gets the fossils, paleontological entity, I guess. <laughs> so um, we're going to play for you the swan from Saint-Saëns' Carnival of the Animals.
Nicely done. Well done, Aristide. Beautiful. Thank you, Aristide and I have been, well, I've had the great privilege, I should say, of working with Aristide for a number of years now. We've been doing a number of concerts and explored various sections of the cello repertoire, the standard repertoire, as well as some more um, fresh and unusual parts of it. And um, this next piece of music is going to combine a bit of both of those because it's the famous, famous Ave Maria by J.S. Bach, Charles Guno. And just to repeat this, Bach writes the accompaniment uh, in about <laughs> seven for the accompaniment <laughs> yards. Yeah. Sorry, Bach. He wrote what he, he wrote. Guno his, saw he, it as an accompaniment. Yeah, yes. exactly. He wrote his contribution. He wrote his prelude in C in about 1700 and something. And um, then Charles Gounod, who was the French Romantic composer in about 1850, added the melody on top. Which is what Aristide is going to play. But we like to you know, keep things fresh and we kind of like to do our own thing. So we're going to play it once and then we're going to repeat it. And then I'm going to improvise and add an extra counter melody on top of that. So it's just kind of a um, Bach... Guno, Duplessis, Diagon, a version of Ave Maria for your happy yeah. enjoy this. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs>
was quite interesting. Yeah. Well done. I think that rather went rather well. <laughs> so that was our version of Ave Maria. Bach, Guno with a little bit of an improvisation from the piano part there as well. Beautifully done. Yeah, well done, Aristide. Lovely piece. Very nice. Actually, Very after good. we've just said, oh, it's the accompaniment of Guno. And now. Yeah, no, it's such amazing music all <laughs> yes, around. I mean, all of it's got such quality. Yeah. It's really, it's a really, it's so fascinating. I played, you know, these one, oh, you've played these pieces as well so often. And every time you play it, there's just a magic that it brings you into and it absorbs you into the music. And you discover new things and a new phrase and a new color. And mm. that's, that's good music. That's just great music, really profound music there. And we're going to change the mood now. I hope you're enjoying this beautiful selection of cello melodies. This is Saturday evenings uh, in concert with our amazing guest artist, cellist Aristide Duplessis. And we're going to change the color and the mood of the music now a little bit. We're going to play some foray. You're going to tell yes. us about it. The Elegy by Foray. Um, foray, it's quite interesting about Foray. Um, when he wrote sonatas, he often wrote the slow movement first. And then as he progressed, he sort of used that as the heart of the piece and wrote the first movement, maybe second and third, uh, third and fourth, and so on, depending. So it's suspected that this was probably going to be part of one of his cello sonatas. It's definitely, in my opinion, at least far superior music to both of the cello sonatas that are out there. And it was originally written for cello and piano, and then at the behest of a conductor, a few years later, he orchestrated it. So it's also it's more commonly known nowadays, I think, as elegy for cello and orchestra. But oh, really? Okay. It's wonderful in this combination yeah. too. It's I mean, a very nicely written piano part. Well, oh, yeah. it's very. It's got great colour and possibility. Mm. You know. It's not just, you don't feel like an orchestra that's failing. Often <laughs> that happens when you're playing an orchestral part. You just feel like you, you're falling short all the time. But with this, it's very well written for the piano as well. So it really yeah. exploits both, mm. both ends. Yeah. It's a great, it's one of my favorite pieces of music. I mean, this is a, a really powerful, so hold on tight. It's a really powerful piece of music. The mm. foray, the elegy. Yeah. A, song of, a song of sadness, right? Or a song yeah, of mourning, sorrow, a mourning, mourning, a lament. A lament, uh, yes. yeah, yeah, yes. yeah.
Beautiful. Well done. Yeah. Great. That was Foray's Elegy, a um, song for a song of mourning. Great piece of music and beautifully played by Aristide Duplessis. Aristide, tell mm -hmm. us about your cello, because I know every string player has has a great passion. And I know you have a, I mean you have an enormous passion for cellos. Yes. You collect cellos like I collect pianos, like lost yes. children mm -hmm. that you find and yeah. nurse them back to health. But tell us about the cello that you're playing this evening. Well the thing about collecting cellos, yes, um, I sold one of them about a, mm, at the beginning of the year. And you felt heartbroken afterwards. <laughs> You know, I, it felt like I had the instrument. I bought it in the middle of last year, and I felt like I had the cello for years, but then I just, yeah. you know, I had two wonderful instruments, and I thought, okay, well, I can't, no musician, well, okay, yes. <laughs> you know, basically, I couldn't afford to. <laughs> two, I just thought <laughs> yeah, about it, sure. you know, so I've got yeah. a card and all of that, but, yeah. you no, know, this, um, well, they had sort of a similar provenance. I'm both, yeah. This is a French instrument. Okay. Uh, from the 19th century, okay. and it's uh, probably the school of a violin maker known as Jean-Baptiste Villon. Okay, Villon, yeah. Yeah, yeah this right. is probably made in his workshop by some of his students and sort of under his supervision, but okay. there's not a single, you know, fingerprint or anything like that of Villon in the sure. cello. Oh, really? okay. One can tell by just the... Well, what the color kind of used to be, but also Perhaps just Barry can Barry can yeah. can you zoom in on the on the Maybe cello at this Maybe. point? Yeah. yeah, there we go. Yeah, beautiful, beautiful instruments. Eh? Yeah, the sort of beautiful the choice thing. of wood is very so, French. It's sort of why I think it's known as wild maple, and nice. so on. I don't think the scroll and neck are original. Okay. And it's suspected the top might be later, but you okay. know, thankfully the sound is the sound is great. Really, really. But you good. make it sound I'm great. Very, I mean, I'm very fortunate. Yeah, that's for sure. <laughs> yes. Because it's the same thing with the piano. I mean, the cello can only do what you are able to yes. make it do, but also you mm. have to be able to make it do that to yes. actually make it happen. And it so. was pro I should give credit where it's due. Um, it was also procured for me. Uh, made available to me by a wonderful um, cellist in our orchestra, oh. who was actually my very first teacher. Oh, okay. Collio, uh, Collio, yeah, of yes. course, right. Okay. And his big passion is violins and cellos. He actually even sets them up. I've got a beautiful oh. bridge that Collio made for me. Wow. I'll he made show that you the back wow. now. We have a there nicer camera angle. Yeah, look at that beautiful. Angle. Look at that. And yeah. Yes. So now I think this, it was yeah. yeah, it was yeah. in a cupboard for quite a while, you know, that kind of yeah, story and so no, the varnish sure. got really damaged, so it is revarnished, but yeah. especially on the front there, Beautiful I don't really color. like uh, that so much, but sort it's of been beautiful. tinkering around, but the sound is good. That's sound all great. that matters. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> and also because you spend so much, I mean, you spend, you, are, you practice for hours a day. Have you been practicing a lot during this last six months, during the lockdown? And everything? Yes. You, you've been writing a book about it. I uh, wrote you two wrote... short books, 30 yeah. pages each. Um, some of you watching, I may have sent it to you already. It's just about <laughs> cool. philosophies of, um, you know, things that I, yeah. we come up when we pra with when we practice. Sometimes we hear a recording of ourselves playing and yeah. we say, oh, well, actually, oh, I should have remembered that one little trick I figured out. You mm. know? And this actually comes from another one of my teachers. Um, and I had a master class with her teacher, mm -hmm. uh, Maria Kliegel. Okay, and Maria yeah. van der yeah. right. Maria Kliegel. And Maria Kliegel told me after the master class, I was just having a discussion with her. She was very generous. This was up in Bloom about 10 years ago. Okay. And she said, when you're practicing something, and this is for all the people at home who are aspiring musicians, and this is really the best advice, is when you're practicing, when you get something right, when something goes really, really, really well, stop. So don't just stop to fix something. You make a mistake, you stop to fix it. Stop when you get something right as well mm. and figure out, well, what did I do mm. yeah, when sure. I got it right? And, and write it down. And the result of that yeah. is this 30 page yeah. book of all these Document. little tips yeah. and everything. Yeah. Yes. So I've I had a very productive yeah. sure. six, six months. Yes. That's oh. great. Oh, that's good to hear. Do you know that writing down thing is so important because it can really help us when we get lost. You know, we get lost in the sort of the kind of, um, what's the word, the sort of you know, never ending journey into something and then you can't find your way out of it. But uh, my very good friend, um, 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 Jilly Walters, you know, from Wedgwood Nougat, mm -hmm. and she's yes, amazing yes. With, with food. 
And um, Jilly's books are always, they're always notated and she's always writing and rewriting down mm. when things went right and when she made it and when it worked and what her tips were written down, which is really useful because, you know, we all work around. Someone said this to me in Cape Town, Shirley Gee. Yeah. You know, I remember Shirley. Yeah, yeah. She said, never carry around things in your head that you can write down in a book or that you can <laughs> read in a book, which is a good point. You know, your head can only take, your brain can only take in so much. Mm. And so to write all these things down and keep a record of them, so when you come back to them, you're not thinking, oh, what did I use here? It's the same with the recipe. You know, how did I change this? It worked last time, and I can't remember why. Whereas if you write it down, it's like, oh, there it is. There. There we go. That's the yes. fingering I used. Just one thing before we go on about your instruments. So you say it's a 19th century instrument, mid-19th century. Probably, yes. Okay. And so the difference is, obviously, I was doing these talks about the piano this week, is that the cello is, or the violin or cello, these wood instruments, uh, stringed instruments, are the, the, the age of the wood and the varnish is what's crucial to give it the sound, mm -hmm. because that's how it somehow settles in the skill. But with a piano, the piano is a, a machine, it's a box of 12,000 moving parts. So a mid-19th century piano, is not something that I really welcome playing <laughs> on <laughs> because it's all a lot of 180 year old moving parts, which is not going to be great. Whereas the cello, it doesn't move, it's the actual resonating box that actually is, has weathered and worn through. Mm -hmm. yeah. Right. Um, also, I just wanted to mention talking about doing things in the amazing camera work. So this evening, thanks to Barry, who's running the show entirely on his own this evening. Barry's doing all the camera switching and the camera angle. So thanks, Barry. And the sound um, our, uh, um, technical team, other part of the technical team, Kevin Liddell, had to go to Johannesburg this weekend. So Barry is doing the complete show. And I think he's doing a great shop, job of it because we can see for the first time, we've actually got a monitor here so we can see exactly what camera we were looking at. Right, we're going to move on to some amazing music that you, one of your favorite pieces. Yes. What um, is that? We're going to play the quite unusual for a cello and piano recital. We're going to play the second movement of the Vorjak Cello Concerto. And how we came to play this was last year. Actually, we played it the first time, I think, on that cello I was talking mm. about that I bought. And yeah, that's right. I mean, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> sold. Yeah. Um, and the reason was we were sort of putting a program together. I can't remember the rest of the program. I just know the Black Swan was there, Villa Lobos. That's right, and yeah a number of other pieces, but we were looking for something slow and beautiful, and I thought, well, what about this, what about this Vorjak? Mm. Because often with Vorjak, you know, we always hear the famous, if, if anything is played from the Vorjak concerto, we always hear... <laughs> And so on, nice. or the last movement, um, and so on. But we never, ever, ever hear anything of the slow movement, and it's the complete it's heart, the heart of, of the, the piece. piece. It's the yeah. heart of the piece, yeah. and it's got quotations from beautiful songs about his, you know, his sister-in-law, who he was in love with when he was a when he was younger, and you know, it's one of his most deepest personal works. Ever yeah. this movement in this concerto. It's very powerful. Yeah. And often, you know, when a piano plays an orchestra part, um, often the piano reductions are rather dull. Meaning, you know, they have to just yeah. play a long Menial. note that a wind yeah. instrument plays. But no, this is sure. this actually works incredibly actually well works on piano. Well. Yeah, the Diagon Philharmonic. Yes, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> I remember in Cape Town. Um, he also had uh, Francois Dutoy, he uh -huh. used to call himself the Rosebank Philharmonic. <laughs> Rosebank Rose in Cape Town, not Rosebank in Johannesburg. Francois is a character, he's one of the funniest people I know. Yeah. I always crack yeah. myself laughing when you know, Rosebank Phil. I did a lot of, I played a lot with the Rosebank Phil, it was, ama it was amazing. Of course. You can give him a piece. Of course. No, he's You'll incredible. play through it, so, you know, the next day it's like, <laughs> you know? Absolutely. Right at the top. It's incredible. Absolutely. Yes. That's right. No, for sure. We've had him jump in twice at the orchestra. Yeah. No, it's incredible. He has a phone him. He came to... the next day and played the Schumann yeah. Concerto and by memory. Got, yeah, no, it's amazing. And what? Well, that, that, that incredible piece. facility. Yes. Yeah. It's amazing. He plays a concerto like no one else I've ever heard. He has that. Nick. Francois, I hope you're watching. Um, <laughs> somebody, should, has, somebody, somebody tag him. <laughs> tag him. But he has that knack. There's a, there's a particular style. There's a particular a sort of about timing and sound and the kind of general weight of the, the musical picture mm -hmm. that 
you have to be able to fit in, you know, just to be able to step in with an orchestra with a minimal rehearsal and just make it work. And he's got that, yeah. he's got that, he that style. Absolutely, yeah. Right, so let's hear you. Which is your favorite cello concerto, by the way? This, the Vorjak, you think? Oh, uh, well. Or do you prefer the Algar? I have Vorjak. Vor I have to okay. say Vorjak, okay. yes. Okay. I have to say Vorjak. Let's not okay. get into that, then. Let's oh, not let's... get into that. Then. Here we go. Okay. So I'm going to be flutes and clarinets and um, beautiful instruments now. Here we go.
Thank you. Well done, Aristide. Oh, it's such a pleasure to play with you. Thank you. <laughs> My orchestra. <laughs> yeah, your orchestra, your own yeah. personal, personal private orchestra. How about that? Mm -hmm. Isn't that amazing music? Gosh, incredible, huh? Eh? Just amazing. Dvorak cello concerto, the central middle movement. Yes. Really, and you said, you mentioned it, you briefly passed over it in the beginning, but you said he quotes a song which he had written that yes. he was he was in love with this young woman and then well, she, at the time that he wrote the song the time he wrote the song i think yeah. i vaguely remember but and then she died and then he ended up marrying his her sister no i think he married he married the sister before okay and i think but the you know the theme which i played uh, i'll just play it in octave mm -hmm. It's quoted, or semi-quoted in the last movements, the... Um, um, and, you know, it's uh, Last Michalain, that's the name of the okay. song. I need to go and look at it, but yes, that's okay. uh, Very poignant, very yeah. beautifully intense. And also another one, the... So much of the second movement yeah, in that right that there. Sure. These coming down, this pentatonic. Da, 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 da. It sounds very much like the. the um... Yes, of course, absolutely. Yeah. Do you know what of Dvorak we haven't played, which we should do, is Songs Your Mother Taught Me? Should we do it now? No. Let's, <laughs> let's, let's pick a key. <laughs> I don't <feel. laughs> No, <I'm> joking. <laughs> it's a great piece. We must do that. We'll yeah. put that in our next program. Hopefully you'll come back and do this again. Sure, yeah. So I hope you are enjoying our selection of music this evening and our presentation. This is Christopher Dygan, Saturday the 3rd in our in-concert session. And we have our first guest artist, Aristide Duplessis, who is playing just magnificently. We hope you are enjoying this on our various Facebook pages, Music Revival KZN, the Cape Classic Music Festival, Christopher Dygan, pianist. Uh, we should have shared it on your page as well. I didn't think we could have done that live, actually. But you can share it now afterwards. Yeah. On your page, because Aristide's got a Aristide Duplessis cellist page on Facebook and a website, and you're very um, proactive with all your social media. Instagram. Instagram, and yeah, I know. Hashtag, hashtag. Exactly, <laughs> hashtag cello We all know there are lots of 19th um, century school. There are lots of um, sort of cheat hashtags out there, you know, use okay. the most common word, hashtag music. Oh. Okay, you see something no, like 40 million me. Uh, okay. no, you didn't hashtag, tell me. like, you, you, didn't know, you didn't summer, share, you didn't hashtag share. cold, or hashtag. <laughs> you didn't share that nugget with me. <laughs> next time, yeah. next time. So if you're interested in cello music or string music or more about cellos, because Aristides, as he loves, also loves sharing the information about his music and about his cellos and his practicing and his bows and really all incredible, incredible Don't things. Forget, strings and strings, tail pieces yeah. and end pins. Exactly. And, and <laughs> cello. <laughs> mutes and silent cellos. Didn't you have a silent cello? I one do, point? yes. When yes. you practice in the, in the flat with neighbors, we talked about that once. Yeah. Okay, so we are going to move I on. I never use it. <laughs> Sorry? I hardly ever use no, it. No, well, you don't need to. That's <laughs> because you don't need to. Yeah. Um, so um, a friend of mine reminds me, a friend of mine in Durban played, was in the orchestra. Uh, in Los Angeles now, and um, she liked, well, she practiced always high notes. What did she, she play? She played clarinet and practiced high notes. I think that's part of like developing clarinet technique is you practice the highest notes you can for as long as you can. <laughs> and uh, so another friend of mine, actually her friend lived on the flat above and said there was this most awful noise used to emanate while they were playing bridge somewhere in, in Musgrave Road. But it's loud, you know, clarinet playing high notes is loud. <laughs> yeah. It's loud, it goes on for a while. You know, practicing can be really difficult. We're going to play a piece that Barry, who's running the technical team this evening, who is the technical, entire technical team. Barry, this is his favorite piece of music. So Barry's, we always, he's always happy for us to practice this at any time. And we're going to play the third movement, the slow movement from Rachmaninoff's amazing cello sonata. And it's so interesting because, again, this, all of the music this evening has, is so, it's just kind of an outpouring, not only because it's cello music. I mean, a lot of cello music is incredibly intense and, and passionate and lyrical. But we've chosen a particularly lyrical program and a really, just a massive outpouring of emotion 
this, in this evening's music, and this is no exception. Rachmaninoff had gone through a huge depression. He had composed his first symphony. This was his major first opus that he would present it publicly. It was a disaster. The conductor was drunk. The orchestra was under-rehearsed. You know who the, the conductor was, apparently? Yeah. I think I read somewhere the conductor was Glatzenoff. Oh, yeah. That's, I remember that. I think it's right. So he probably was, gl he gl was gl drunk. Gl yeah, he was drunk on often, I think. <laughs> exactly. And he didn't know the music very well, and the orchestra didn't like it, and the audience didn't like it. And um, Rachmaninoff sat in the passageway outside after the performance in tears because he knew what a disaster this was going to be. And he went into a huge depression and gave up composing and was really in one of those moments. And then he met a psychiatrist who was also he was interested in hypnotherapy and a guy by the name of Nicholas Dahl. And I remember this name because he dedicated the second piano concerto, which which uh, he wrote that. He wrote the amazing suite for two pianos, which is a really brilliant work, and this cello sonata all at the same time. So this therapy that he went through kind of unlocked his entire creative spirit and energy, gave him confidence to write. He just believed in himself. No, 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 it just everything flowed. He was working apparently on all three of these pieces at once. Um, opus 18, 19 and 20, right? This yeah, the sonata he wrote at the same time. Exactly yes, the yes, same time. Yeah. They were like all together. So this Which music... Which was the third piece? The, the two, two piano, yeah, the two piano oh. suite, the second oh, two okay. piano suite. Okay. Amazing, also amazing music. And um, so all of these pieces are just incredibly, beautifully open-hearted and lyrical. And then he writes the cello sonata, and in the third movement, the slow movement, he writes this incredible music, which for many, I think even including me, is the best, if you can say that, but really one of the most sublime moments of cello and piano writing, because it's such an incredible piano part that he engages the two instruments very, very well. So we would like to play that for you now. This is the third movement from the Rachmaninoff Cello Sonata. Thank you. 
Nicely done. Great stuff. Thank you, Barry, for your support this evening and always. That brings us to the end of this evening's program, I think, Aristide. What do you think? We, yes. Uh, it's five minutes to seven. I don't think we can really say anything after Rachmaninoff. I think it's a, a moment, a moment of moments. <laughs> <laughs> and after that music, I think everyone needs a, a, an interval and a um, intermission to restore themselves. And uh, we look forward to welcoming you, welcoming you back on our live streams. We're intending our live streams to keep going. And now that lockdown level one is here, it's more viable for us to have <laughs> guest artists in the program. And uh, this has been a great experience. I hope you've enjoyed this. Thank you, Aristide, for coming. From Thanks Durban for inviting to joining. me. That's always lovely to work with you. Always <laughs> fantastic to play with you. Thank you for playing so beautifully. Thank you. And sharing your knowledge with us. Um, thank you again to Barry for all the technical support and for making this all happen. And thank you to all of you for joining us and for persevering with sitting through with the previous 53 live streams just with me. And now we've got a whole new range of music and a range of possibilities. Aristide's uh, performance has really been exceptional, I think, this evening. Well done to you. Congratulations you. and, and everything you. that you've achieved in your career. And I'm sure you all look forward to seeing Aristide um, in his future performances. When is your next big major? Do you have a, do you have anything lined up? Is everything still on hold? Concertos with the orchestra. You played with the orchestra in Johannesburg recently. And Durban. And Durban, yeah. Uh, oh, I'm probably going to play a trio concert. I recently formed a string trio with oh, right. myself and Raritza Macheva on right. violin and Raritza. Anna Maria. Anna Maria, right. Anna Maria, everyone knows be just Anna Maria on, viol okay. on viola. Okay. Uh, Beethoven string trios, that's what nice. we're doing, yes. Very rarely played, very beautiful. Very rarely music. played, very yes. beautiful. Very difficult. Oh, but very. it's a challenge. Of course, know, challenge. of course. Great, <laughs> yes. great stuff. Well, that brings us to the end of In Concert with Aristide Duplessis and myself, Chris Verdagen. This is coming from our home studio in Peter Maritzburg on this very chilly Saturday evening. Thank you for joining us. I hope you've enjoyed this wonderful selection of music. Look after yourselves, stay warm, and let's keep the music playing. Don't stop the music. Look forward to seeing you on Wednesday when I have another session of uh, Piano Hour, another variety of music, some popular things, some ragtime tango, a bit of improvisation, some of my own pieces. Wait, we've left something out. Have we? My own piece. Oh. oh, wait, sorry, this is not the end of the program. Okay, sorry, there's more. Gosh, I was so overwhelmed by the Rachmaninoff. It's such an intense piece of music, I thought. Okay, now we have got more, actually. We have got more, so don't go away. Come back, come back. Um, Aristides, we've got the... Um, this is for those who thought, with, the, who thought with, the concert was at Do you need the music for this, uh, for I have it, yeah. Yeah. Can you see it there? Are yeah. you, okay. So we're going to play. So when we did a concert recently, Aristide had been listening to my own compositions online on my album Indigo and one of the 4KZN landscapes. And he said, could we try the piece Heimville, which he really, really liked. It's a composition I wrote that was inspired by the approach into Underberg and Heimville, the beautiful Drakensberg Mountains, beautiful part of the world. Very, it just feels like you're at the end of everything there. It just everything comes to a halt somehow. It's a very magical place to visit and to be. And I wrote a little piece called Heimville, and Aristide and I are going to play that for you now. Sorry, I forgot about that completely. What was that?
Well done. Beautiful. Yeah. Beautifully played. Thank you, Aristide. Thank you for Thank asking you. to do that. That was one of my own compositions. Always amazing to hear my own music in someone else's hands. And I want and to do the other three at some point yeah, also. Yeah, big fun. Let's what let's keys are the other three in? The others are in D major, E flat, and C. But we can oh, arrange yeah, yeah. <laughs> Good, no, easy good. Keys. Those, Those are, are easy nice. keys. This is in D flat. Easy keys. One. So Such a different, beautiful. You never hear D flat major on the cello. Yeah, it's a beautiful. It's a lovely key to play. It's such a different it's, resonance. I yeah. was thinking of transcribing it to D no, major, but it's it loses its. It's got a its deep, darkness. Yeah, yeah, it's got a sort of mellow. D flat major's got a mellowness, mm. a mellow quality. It's interesting that it shouldn't, but it's amazing that keys do have these qualities. Oh, absolutely. So it's incredible. Yeah, yeah. Now that brings us to the end of this evening's program. So thank you for joining us. Lastly, if you are able to support us, obviously these live streams all go out free on various platforms on our website, YouTube, etc. And if you're able to make a donation or buy a ticket, I always say buy a ticket is always good. Uh, if you've enjoyed this and you'd like to see more guest artists on our programs and more of these live streams, please do support us. I think there might even be a little QR, QR code coming up on the screen um, shortly where you can take your cell phone and open your camera app and snap at the screen if you're watching. Uh, otherwise, visit our website, musicrevival.co.za, and it will lead you to all the pages there, the page to donate via PayPal if you're international. I know we've got many viewers in Turkey and Mexico and London and York and England who are watching regularly. Hello to all of you out there. Dave and Sue Mon Brown and to Julie in Turkey and Guillermo in Mexico at the embassy. I know he's always watching regularly. And um, isn't it amazing? KZN, South African talent. Aristide Duplessis, what a brilliant, brilliant performance tonight. Thank you. Thank yes. you for being here. And if you'd like to support us in our endeavors, please do pop along to our website and find out more about how you can do that. Thank you again to Barry. Keep well, look after yourselves, stay warm, and see you on Wednesday and next Saturday.
you improvise an A flat. Give it a go.